good afternoon to you all last lecture we have done output method of measuring the national income now in output method we have seen that the national income is calculated by adding up the value of all the goods and services which are produced within the economy during a given period of time in that we have seen the two approaches they are final good method and second one that is a value added method in final good method we had seen that national income is calculated by adding the value of the final goods and services final good method mein hum log national income kaise calculate karte hain we add the value of a final consumer goods and we neglect the value of a intermediate goods whereas in value added method in value added method we had seen that since the product is passes through the different stages of a production we calculate the national income by adding up the value of that product in each stage of production now we are going to study about the income method of measuring the national income now this income method is also called as an a factor cost method now why it is called as an a factor cost method because the income received by an individual or one person is a cost to the another person we have seen that the national income is a flow concept it is a flow of goods and services which are produced within economy and the income will flow in the form of the receipt and payment the payment made by the firm the businessman to the household for their factor services like land labor capital and entrepreneur is the income to the household but the cost to the firm so here therefore the national income by the income method is also known as an a factor cost method household supplies the various factors for which they receive the factor income which is a cost to the firm so in this method we calculate the national income by adding up the income received by the all the citizens within a country in the form of factor income that is in the form of the rent wages interest and profit now how will get this data about the income received by the different citizens of the country that is through the data this data is obtained from the different sources for instance instance income tax return report book of account report as well as the estimates for the small income so in this way we calculate the national income by calculating the income on by all the factors of a production within economy as a result of a undertaking the various economic activities 
So in this way, we obtain the national income by adding up this income in the form of received in the form of rent, wages, interest, profit, mixed income, and the net income from the abroad. So factors they receive the income in the form of rent, wages, interest, profit. Now, what is the mixed income over here? It includes the income received by a self-employed person. In the case of a self-employed person, for example, a small shopkeeper, if he is using his own place or own house for the business purpose, then he will receive the income in the form of rent. And if he is working on his own in his shop, he is not hiring any labor from outside, then he will receive the income in the form of wages also. Since he is the owner of the shop, he will also earn the profit. So in this way that uh, the same person, a self-employed person, is receiving the income through the various sources. That is the rent, wages, interest and profit. This is known as uh, the mixed income. This is called mixed income. That is mix, mixed income means what? Income received by the self-employed person. Through various forms. Further, while calculating the national income, by the income method, we also add the net income received from the foreign trade. Net income received from the foreign trade that can be obtained by deducting the expenditure incurred on the import from the income received from the export. Now, following precautions we have to take while calculating the national income with the use of income method of calculation of a national income. First thing that we have to remember that the transfer payment so what is the transfer payment? Payment made in the form of a scholarship, gift, donations, charity, old age pension, unemployment allowances should be ignored. Now why we have to ignore this transfer payment? Even though it is income to these people, those who receive the scholarship or pension, they are receiving the income without any economic activity without involving in the process of production. They are not contributing to the production, but still they are receiving the income. Therefore, such an income should be ignored. Next thing that we have to remember, all the unpaid services, unpaid services means for which we are not making any kind of the payment. Like services of housewife. If your mother or sister, if they are working in your house, home, you are not making any payment. And therefore, even though they are involved into the production, since we are not making any payment, their service is counted as a free service. And while calculating the national income, we are considering only the monetized transaction. Non-monetized transaction, like the services of housewife, teachers teaching to his own child should be ignored because they are not monetized. Any income from the sale of a second-hand goods, like a car, house, should be ignored. Now, why we are we have to ignore these their values? Because their value is already calculated. 
in the year when they are produced. So therefore, that value of such a goods should be ignored while calculating the national income. Similarly, we have to ignore the income received from the shares and bonds as they do not contribute to the national income. Revenue received by the direct taxes, again, that should be ignored because it is just a transfer of income from the consumer to the government. And the income of a consumer is by already calculated income received by the citizens or the consumer within a country. So therefore, the indirect taxes should be ignored while calculating the national income with the use of income method. Undistributed profit and income from the government properties and profit from the public enterprises such as a water supply should be included while calculating the national income with use of a, ignore that is a income. Method. Similarly, the value of a, the goods which are kept for self-consumption purpose should be included while calculating the national income. Their imputed value should be calculated and that should be included into the total national income. So these are the precautions that we have to take while measuring the national income with the use of income method. The another method that is used for calculation of a national income, that is an expenditure method. The expenditure method is also called as a total outlay method. Now in this method, we calculate the national income by adding up the value, by adding up the total expenditure incurred by the society during a given period of time. The income can be spent either on consumer goods or the capital goods. And therefore, we can obtain the national income by summing up all the consumption expenditure, investment expenditure made by all the individuals during a given period of time. The expenditure and investment expenditure incurred by the business firm as well as the expenditure incurred by the government. If we add, if we sum up their expenditure, we will get the national income. Therefore, we will get the formula for national income for expenditure method of calculating the national income is C plus I plus G plus X minus N plus R minus P. Where C stands for the consumption expenditure. As just now we had seen that the consumption expenditure can be incurred on either on durable goods or non-durable goods. Therefore, the private consumption expenditure, it includes the expenditure on the durable, non-durable goods like food. These kinds of the expenditure, further, expenditure incurred on the non-durable goods include the purchase of the durable assets like uh, durable goods like uh, television, uh, fridge, car, 
फर्नीचर दीज एक्सपेंडिचर सारा कॉल्ड एज एन आर ड्यूरेबल एक्सपेंडिचर नेक्स्ट कंपोनेंट इन आवर फॉर्मूला दैट इज द आई नाउ आई स्टैंड्स फॉर द इन्वेस्टमेंट एक्सपेंडिचर एंड हु इज मेकिंग द इन्वेस्टमेंट दैट इज द बिजनेस पर द इन्वेस्टमेंट कैन बी मेड बाय द बिजनेसमैन either for the renewal of the old assets or for the purchase of new assets or the new firm new industry all these are included into the private investment expenditure next government expenditure the government expenditure again it is classified as consumption expenditure and investment expenditure consumption expenditure incurred by the government include the expenditure incurred on the provision of various services like administrative services like law and order defense education health etc whereas the investment expenditure of the government it include the expenditure incurred by the government on the creation of the capital assets capital assets like construction of roadways railways dams bridges these kinds of the expenditure of the government they are called as an investment expenditure further it also include the net income from foreign trade the net income from foreign trade or the net foreign trade is obtained by deducting the expenditure on the imported goods from the income received from the export in the last component that we study over here that is the net receipt net receipt that is incurred by the foreigners it is obtained by deducting the value of net payment made by the indians or the residents to the foreign countries and the income received in the form of the expenditure made by the foreigners on the indian goods so in this way we will get the net received from the foreign trade now here while making the use of the expenditure method we have to take into the consideration following precautions what precautions that we have to take first thing that the expenditure on intermediate goods and services should be ignored while counting while avoiding double count because the value of these intermediate goods or semi finished goods is already included into the final goods so therefore to avoid the double counting we should avoid calculating the value of these intermediate goods which is already included into the final goods similarly the purchase and sale of the second hand goods like house car should be ignored because these goods are not produced in the current year and their value is already calculated in the year in which they are produced so therefore the value of these second hand goods should be ignored while calculating the national income the next thing that we have to remember 
the expenditure on the transfer payment like scholarship old age pension unemployment allowances should be ignored and as the include just the transfer of income from the government to the people they are not making any contribution to the production so therefore such a transfer payment should be ignored similarly expenditure incurred on the purchase and sale of repurchase of the financial assets like shares bond debentures because such a type of a transaction do not add to the flow of goods and services now the next thing that we have to see indirect taxes indirect taxes should be ignored now why do we have to ignore the value of indirect taxes even though it is the income to the government why we have to ignore the indirect taxes because it is just a transfer of income from public to the government citizens or the consumer to the government and the value of income of the consumer is already included into the national income therefore the indirect taxes should be ignored similarly expenditure on the final goods and services while calculating the national income we should consider only the value of final goods and services and we should not consider the value of intermediate goods because their value is already calculated in the value of final goods next thing that subsidies to be ignored now the subsidies is just a transfer made by the government to the public it reduces the market price so therefore to calculate the exact value of national income at current market price we should ignore the value of the subsidy now we had seen the three different method income method output method and expenditure method out of these method income method and output method is extensively used by the uk and usa whereas the country like india cso the estimation of a national income is done by the cso central statistical organization cso adopt the cam combination of both output method and income method to estimate the national income so in india we are using this combination of income method and output method to calculate the exact value of national income so this is what about we have seen the national income concept of national income and the methods of measuring the national income Now, if you are having any doubts, you can ask.